second live event in this continuing celebration of Marie Month in Canada. Uh, I'm Eric, uh, Education Program Coordinator uh, with Canadian Geographic, and uh, I'm delighted to be your host for today's presentation. Uh, Marie Month is a brand new program that offers students like yourselves the opportunity to delve into the fascinating world of Canada's marine industry, uh, exploring the people, projects, careers, technologies, uh, and adventures that shape this vital sector. Over the course of October, we have a total of seven uh, live presentations lined up, each offering you a chance to meet real professionals working on land and at sea. Um, I would like to begin by acknowledging that the individuals you'll meet today, as well as the projects and careers we'll discuss, uh, are located across the diverse traditional territories of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. Um, and we extend our gratitude for their ongoing stewardship uh, of our lands and waters. Additionally, I'd like to express our appreciation to the Canadian uh, Marine Careers Foundation, our valued partners who have made it possible for us to bring uh, bring you the Marine Month program. So for all of you uh, tuning in on YouTube, uh, please share your comments and questions in the chat and we'll make sure uh, our presenters uh, address them during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So uh, now who's ready to embark on our next marine adventure? Uh, today's presentation focuses on Algoma Central Corporation and two distinguished guests with us today, uh, Raquel Schneider and Jacob Wilson. Hello, both of you. Welcome. And thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so uh, not going to delay. I know you guys have a lot to talk about. So I'm going to hand over the microphone to you. And uh, I'll see you in a little while. Thanks a lot. See you later. Okay, thanks, Eric. Um, so, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Raquel, and I am uh, Algoma's Media Marketing Assistant. Uh, I'm also a student at Brock University, and I'm currently interning for a year. Um, I joined the maritime industry because of its deep roots in Canada, um, you know, the opportunities to meet all kinds of people, whether that's in office or on our ships, um, and because ships are pretty cool. Perfect. Well, thanks for the introduction, uh, Eric and Raquel. Um, uh, hello everyone, my name is uh, Jacob Wilson and I work as a naval architect at Algoma, keeping the ships uh, moving and running. Um, I joined the maritime industry because I grew up in a small town on Lake Erie and I used to see large freighters pass by my house uh, every day, so I wanted to be a part of uh, that industry and now here I am at Algoma. Okay, so um, welcome to Algoma. Um, I wanted to get a little bit into the history and story uh, quickly uh, of our company uh, because it is over 100 years old and it is 124 years old, uh, quite literally. Um, so our company began in 1899 uh, as the Algoma Central Railway in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Uh, in 1900, 1900 uh, we purchased four steam vessels, uh, the Leafield, the Monkshaven, the Paliki, and the Fiano. Um, this is how our marine journey began. Um, in 1935, two ships were purchased and renamed Algo San and Algo Steel, uh, and Algoma Shipping Company Limited was created. Uh, here is a photo of the Algo San. Uh, at this time, our ships were very successful and our fleet was growing. Um, it, since 1990, Algoma started uh, growing the business by transporting cargo like grain and salt on really big ships. In 1995, we sold the railway and we became all about ships. In 2013, Algoma's first Equinox ship uh, arrived in Canada, and since then, nine more have been built in China and Croatia, and we have two more on the way. Uh, can anyone guess where the Algoma Equinox is in this photo? Now, while you're guessing, oh, you can't click. You can't click on it. Okay. Um, while you're guessing as to where this photo was taken, the Algoma Equinox was actually the first vessel of the Equinox fleet to join us in Canada. So it's actually the oldest of one of our new vessels. Um, but it doesn't look like any of you have guessed where this ship is, so I think I can answer the question for you. Um, Raquel, is this ship located in Toronto? It is, actually. That's pretty cool. Um, it is downtown Toronto in the harbor. Um, it's in a port just off of a street called Cherry. 
Oh yeah, uh, looks like we got an answer from Tofor Scramstad in Toronto. You got it. Cool. So did you know our Econos class ships are much more eco-friendly than the old ships that they replaced? Uh, they help us reduce our greenhouse gases uh, and by nearly half because of their efficient technology, uh, fuel efficiency, and larger, larger cargo capacity. Today, Algoma ship has ships that deliver cargo all around the world. Uh, we do this ourselves and with some great partners that live in places like Sweden and Switzerland. So now Raquel's giving you an introduction on Algoma. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what our fleet consists of and what they do. So the first vessels in our fleet are our dry bulk vessels. These vessels are designed specifically for operating the Great Lakes and they're called our dry bulk vessels because they transport large quantities of dry cargo. Um, they're different than the container ships that you'll see on TV and they transport raw materials that are in large quantities and are not packaged. Um, you would find products of, like this on farms with grain, in mines like coal, or on construction sites like steel and concrete. Um, these vessels, uh, as part of the Equinox fleet, are modern and eco-friendly ships, and they carry uh, everything at a more fuel-efficient rate than the older vessels that they replaced. Uh, you can see in the red circles the Algoma product tankers. These vessels move liquid petroleum through the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence, and even trading on the east coast of Canada. Our largest tanker can carry 21, nearly 21,000 cubic meters of liquid, and that's almost as much uh, for one tank of gas for everyone that lives in Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, moving on to our next section of ships is our international vessels. So the vessels that operate in the Great Lakes can't leave the Great Lakes, but we do own a group of eight ships that operate in the oceans as self-unloading vessels. Um, they're called self-unloaders as they uh, Unload, the, uh, unload themselves and they don't need any external help. These vessels mostly sail in North America, but can travel all over the world if they're needed. And then the last uh, division of Algoma is our short sea shipping with our partners, uh, Nova Marine in Switzerland. Uh, these vessels carry uh, other dry bulk cargoes like cement, um, uh, similar to the vessels that operate in the Great Lakes, but these sail all over the world. So, Let's find out what exactly we are shipping. Uh, one of the first things is salt. So uh, we ship the salt we use to keep our icy roads safe in the winter, uh, right from the largest salt mine in the world in Goderich, Ontario. Uh, agriculture. Uh, so most of our agricultural shipments is wheat for making things like bread and pasta. Petro products. Um, we also ship oil that is used for heating homes in the winter, uh, the gasoline we use for our cars, and the jet fuel we use to go on vacation. And this is one of our product tankers going through uh, the Straits near Kingston. Beautiful. Iron and steel. So uh, the iron and steel we use are wide uh, are used widely to build railways, roads, homes, big skyscrapers like the ones you saw in Toronto, uh, and more. And this is one of our vessels in DeFasco in Hamilton. Construction. Um, our vessels are used to tra transport construction aggregate products, cement, or building material supplies used to build our roads and homes. Or salt as well. Uh, so at Algoma, we're trying to move towards a cleaner and a greener future uh, by supporting research projects that help us design ships to be as eco-friendly and efficient as possible. Um, one of our vessels can hold as many as 301 rail cars worth of material or nearly a thousand trucks that are on the road. So it's one of the most green, or sorry, it is the most green form of transportation around. And these vessels have very particular uh, set of arrangements on them. Um, so we can talk a little bit about the engine room on our vessels. So the engine room is the part of the ship that the engine, where the, the main engine is placed. Uh, these engines can be as tall as a three-story building and can make the ship go quite fast with a lot of power. Um, they can move about as fast as the uh, fastest person on your track team. Um, the ship also has a special system that cleans the air that comes out of the engines. Um, you may have learned about the water cycle in school. Uh, so our 
these systems on our engines remove nasty particles from the air so it doesn't go into the water cycle and end up in your drinking water or in your food. Uh, the hull of our vessels has been designed very carefully so that the ship doesn't break when it's loaded with lots of cargo. Um, and these vessels can carry twice their weight uh, with, uh, sorry, they can carry twice their weight when they're fully loaded versus when they're not loaded. Uh, these ships are made specifically for operating in the Great Lakes and they're as, about as long as two football fields and just as wide as half of a football field. Um, you can see this photo that Ra Raquel has put up of one of our vessels in the St. Lawrence Seaway um, in one of the locks. And there's only a few inches on either side, so they're maximized for how big they can be. Um, the propellers on the vessels are about 18 feet wide, which is about as wide as a two-car garage. Um, so they're quite big and they help the ship move through the water. Uh, the last cool piece of a vessel is the anchor. Every ship has two of these big anchors uh, at the front in case they need to stop or if they're sitting and waiting to be loaded. And you can see this is a photo of one of our anchors in the bottom of a dry dock. I do believe it was the Algoma Equinox. Um, can any of you guess how heavy a single anchor is? Let us know in the comments because they are quite, uh, quite big. And you would think that you might be able to move it around with your hands or with a truck, but you can't. We have to use massive road cranes to uh, to lift these out of position and let them wow. drop into the into the dock. They're quite uh, they're quite cool. And when we lay up our ships alongside in the winter, we actually put these on the dock so that the ships don't go anywhere in case there's uh, uh, a big storm or something and, and lines break. So they're really a fail safe for for our vessels. And so uh, these anchors, um, when when do you when does a ship typically deploy the anchor? Like what? What's the reasoning? If they're waiting to load, if there's a ship in the in the, the harbor that they're heading into, they'll use the anchor then. Um, oh, we see an answer from the bake. It's got to be tonnage. Uh, yes, they are measured in tons. Yes, um, definitely. But this anchor in particular is... Uh, so it is 15,000 pounds, and uh, a single anchor weighs about the same as one African elephant. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Um, so most ships uh, have 22 cabins, a gym, a recreation room, laundry facilities, and a galley. Uh, most of the cabins in our Canadian ships even have a private bathroom, desk, and a TV to play video games on. Sweet. So our wheelhouse, uh, the navigation command station is where deck officers make sure that the ship travels safely. Uh, big windows all around the um, uh, wheelhouse uh, gives, you know, a uh, great vision for the captains and for the officers to make sure that they know where they're going. Um, and there's a big control panel with screens that show everything about the ship, like the engine, the steering, the maps, and the communication. The self-unloading equipment. So this equipment can unload cargo from all five cargo holds really fast. So about 300 tons to 6,000 tons every hour fast. Uh, there are five cargo holds, and when combined, uh, they're the length of... Uh, they are double the length of an Olympic hockey rink, and together they can hold a total of 31,000 metric tons of cargo. So just as a reference, that's about 58 million tins of corn per shipment, or almost 2 billion Jolly Ranchers by weight. Um, this is an image of one of our self-unloading vessels, the Algoma Compass, unloading salt in uh, Buffalo. This is an early morning shot. Okay, so uh, we're going to be showing you a quick video. Um, I had the privilege to be able to go on board the Algoma conveyor and uh, help uh, create a video that shows students uh, what it's like to live on board one of our vessels and how unique it is to, uh, to experience life on the water. Cargo ships transport our world, but why do most people know absolutely nothing about them? Have you ever wondered where the things you use every day come from? The bread for your sandwich, the corn to feed our favorite farm animals, or the salt we use on roads in the winter? With over 29 active Algoma ships and 90,000 cargo ships across the world, our industry is responsible for the import and export of almost all of the goods we use in our everyday life. But today we want to show you why this matters and hopefully help you find a place where you fit in this world on water. Here at Algoma, we seek adventure. So our solution to finding the answers to all of your questions was to, yeah, let you hitchhike on one of our ships from Goderich to the Welland Canal. 
Our journey starts in Goderich, Ontario, at the largest salt mine in the world. We're getting on the Algoma conveyor as she's being loaded with salt. She's two football fields long and part of Algoma's Equinox class, which is a fleet of 10 eco-friendly vessels that Algoma invested $560 million in building. As soon as we got on, we were greeted and guided to our cabins. Once we settled in, we met Sabrina, who showed us around the living quarters. How are you? Come in. So, these are our cabins. We all have our own beds or our own rooms, our own bathrooms. We all have double beds. We got our TVs. Everyone has their own windows. So we can just look out and when we're in the canals, we can just get a view of the outside. So here we have the mess. This is where everyone eats three meals a day, breakfast, dinner, and supper because I'm from Newfoundland. So dinner is your lunch, supper is your dinner. <laughs> so we got our own little fridges. We got our coffee, our cream, our yogurt, juices. And then we got a little salad bar whenever we're wanting a little snack. Our little delicious freezer. <laughs> They'll stock them up every day whenever it gets low. So we're never at ice cream. So this is our crew rec room. So we'll just turn on movies or TV. And if there's more than a couple people, they'll just pick and choose what we want to watch. So we all got our own like internet cards and we get like 40 gigabytes a month. So we can just stream whatever we want to do. So we got our gym. We even got a TV in our gym too. And we got the little bouncy thing. Don't know what they're called, but some sort of thing. And we got a bunch of machines, so let's go by pass by some time. Then we headed up to the wheelhouse to see where Sabrina works. Okay, so this is where I work too. So we'll be steering. Captain will give us our orders. The orders to steer like 180 degrees, 10 degrees port, 10 degrees starboard, things like that. And then we got our radars over there, got our wheel there, and then we got all big windows all around, so the captains and mates Got a good view of what's going on. Uh, I like steering, seeing different uh, places. You always got good views too, so that's always a bonus. Hello, my name is Drew and I'm the second officer on board the Agwama conveyor. So this ship is uh, 740 feet long and we have 28,000 tons of cargo on board. We have five massive cargo holds that are probably the size of a house each and uh, they're all full of salt. These are our life rings if, in case something goes wrong. There's, uh, we throw these out to the guys. That's never happened before. We do things very safely, but there's emergency protocols. Uh, we also have a free fall lifeboat on board where if we have to abandon ship in case of an emergency, uh, we climb into the lifeboat and we have a lever which we pump and then the lifeboat goes into the water and we can escape the boat safely. So right now we're in the Welland Canal, but if we were more in open waters, uh, we would be watching out for marine uh, mammals, keep an eye out for whales. And if we see anything, we usually alter course so we don't interfere with them and uh, stay out of their way. We were getting a little hungry, so we went to go find the cook and learn a little bit more about the food on board. Yeah, I start my day by make, like cooking bacon and sausages and making fresh pancakes, fresh toast. And obviously, as soon as that's done, I make a menu so the guys can literally just come in and go, OK, this is that's what's there for today. I have three individual walk-in fridges. This fridge is pretty much all my fruit and veg and dairy products in here. There's two walk-in freezers. In this one, we have our ice creams, our bread, our pastries, frozen vegetables, frozen fries, that kind of thing. Last but not least, is our protein fridge. Pork, beef, sausages, whatever, all our raw products goes in here. You're working with 20 odd people, you do not want to get anyone sick. So everything has to be separated and making sure that everything is on the highest standard level. And that's it. Here's all our dry store. Tin tomatoes, our dressings, anything dry pretty much belongs in here. 
obviously coming from the accent, I'm not from Canada. I'm from London, England. Um, I've, I've started chefing when I, was, when I was 18 years old. I got interested in in sailing uh, very much so when I was with Royal Caribbean and kind of cruise, but I never knew there was a industry in Canada. You can't just come on board. You have to get a certification from Transport Canada. Having your m marine first aid, you don't know if one of the deckhands or someone in your vicinity is actually in danger. You might be able to help them. You know, that's why we do these things. And uh, we do fire drills and making sure that you know where your exits are and you know where your your meeting points are. It is a great, great career path to have. It really is. I mean, anyway, from, from the captain, the chief mate, deckhands, in the engine room, even the catering aspects of things, having a good cook is a great motivation for the rest of the team. I enjoy what I do. I really do. I pretty much think I've seen more, most of Canada than any Canadian, you know? So, it's an experience, an experience how vast this country is. You do make a lot of good friends as well. I, I enjoy being here. I really do enjoy it. After lunch or dinner or supper, we went down to the heart of the ship to meet the engineers who keep the ship running. So this is the heart of the ship. This is the engine control room. This is where we start the engine, we stop the engine. This is where we control the potable water, the ventilation, the electricity. Everything going on in the ship is happening here. Then we have this computer is only for the main engine, control the timing, the exhaust valve opening, the fuel quantity. So this is the one of the most important computer on board. For here we have a slow speed engine. That's a massive engine that only rotates at 100 RPM. Usually like a car engine, typical car engine, will run at 4,000 RPM. This engine is running at 100. And at slow speed, we can run it as low as 40 RPM. So it's less than one, re one revolution per second. With Algoma, most of the ships, they are equipped with uh, an exhaust gas scrubber, which is controlled by this monitor over there. Because we're burning heavy fuel, this is not a very clean fuel. It's, a, it's got sulfur inside, and this is harmful for the environment. So now this system is removing the sulfur that would otherwise go in the air. The exhaust gas goes through a shower. The water takes out the sulfur from the exhaust gas. Oh, it's a very efficient, like almost all of the sulfur is gone. I came on ship because of the, you get to see the world. Like I've traveled all over the world. I've been in every continent, every place on earth. I've been to uh, Australia, Singapore, China, all over Europe, all the Caribbean. If you like to travel, you come work on the ship. Then it was time to head down to the lowest part of the ship, a room they call the tunnel. The cargo, which is uh, salt right now, is up here. And what happens is it's gravity fit into this uh, conveyor system by opening these uh, gates here. Uh, the salt will come down on the conveyor belt. And there's, uh, there's two of them on each side. And what will happen is that will take it to the transfer, which are right here. These transfers take that cargo, move it into the loop, and take it up and it goes on to the boom, and that's where it's unloaded onshore. Then it was finally time to meet the captain, the man in charge of safely delivering the 28,000 tons of cargo on board. I started in the galley, really, on fishing boats in the galley, and, and then just worked my way up from third mate to second mate, the first mate, and the captain. I'm at sea, been at sea for 54 years, and uh, I love my job. I really love my job. I love training people. And it's the camaraderie. We have everything you want. It's better than being at home. Where can you get? Does your mother get up and make you three choices of a meal? Breakfast, dinner, and supper? You know, you got everything you want here. The people you meet and what you're going to learn, the places you see, and see how other people live and uh, uh, how other people work. You can learn so much that the navigation or engineering or just ways of life, you know, with everyday life. You learn how to make decisions. You got to look at climate change and you got, you know, the environment. We got to look after the environment. If maybe not for us guys, but for our grandkids or great grandkids, it's, it's going to be a big, uh, you know, it's going to make a big difference. You know what I mean? We got, we got to keep them safe. The lakes and the oceans are the lifeline of Canada. 
at Algoma, respecting and protecting our Earth, water, and life by making our ships the most eco-friendly and efficient ships they can possibly be has been in our DNA for over a century. With an interest in over 80 vessels worldwide, for us, it's not just about sailing our Great Lakes and oceans. It's about sailing towards a safer and greener future. Are you ready to seek new adventures? 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 Are you ready to sail with Algoma? Perfect. So I see a question there from the bake. Um, I think we'll put a pin in that until the end when we do a Q&A session and then we'll, we'll get back to you then. Yeah. Um, so uh, at Algoma, uh, safety always comes first. Uh, our top job is making sure every person who works with us, whether on ship or on land, goes back home safe. Uh, everyone is also welcome at Algoma. Uh, we're all about creating a space and a vibe uh, where everyone feels like they belong, are respected, and are accepted. Uh, we really value each person for who they are and what they bring to the table, no matter their gender, orientation, religion, ability, or ethnicity. Um, at Algoma, there's always something to learn, and you will always be learning something new and growing. Um, with our scholarship program at Algoma, we help students pay for their maritime education, as well as supporting them when they're a cadet on board to earn hours towards uh, their certifications. Um, we provide uh, scholarships to five marine schools across Canada. Uh, this includes uh, BCIT, British Columbia Institute of Technology in near Vancouver, uh, the Georgia Maritime College in Ontario, uh, the Maritime Institute of Quebec near Quebec City, um, the Nova Scotia Community College across Nova Scotia, as well as Memorial University of Newfoundland in St. John's. So, oh, um, the Department of Functions, which crew member are you? Uh, the captain. So the captain is the boss of the ship. Uh, they're in charge of keeping the crew, the ship, the cargo, and the water they sail on safe. Uh, captains are typically natural leaders. They're calm and they're great at problem solving. Uh, our mates, so on the ship, there are first, second, and third mates. They're the highest ranking crew in the deck department. Uh, and they take care of the navigation equipment and look out after the outside of the ship. Uh, mates are typically responsible and great with technology. The chief engineer, so the chief engineer is the boss of the engineering department. Uh, they take care of all of the ships and make sure that the crew and the environment are safe. Uh, chiefs typically have mechanical skills, are great with tools, and love math or physics. Uh, chief cook on the vessel, as you see in the video, uh, they oversee the ship's kitchen. They handle everything from making food and planning meals and ordering supplies for the kitchen. They are very creative and energetic and are quite organized. Uh, we also have unlicensed crew on our vessels. That includes the able, able seamen or wheelsmen, which work on the ship's bridge to help steer the ship or to keep watch. Um, they're adaptable, resilient, and great team players. Some of these unlicensed crew members can become a electrician, a head tunnelman, or a mobile utility employee, um, where they are taking care of machinery in the engine room or running the machines that live in the tunnel, as you saw in the video. Uh, these crew members are proactive in their roles and are quite knowledgeable. The engineers that work in the engine room uh, consist of the uh, second, third, and sometimes fourth engineers who work under the chief engineer. Uh, they are quite curious people, love problem solving, and are quite creative in their roles. Uh, the last people that we have on board the vessels are a cadet, and this could be you after high school. Uh, cadets spend most of their time uh, training to become certified mates or engineers on board and are very dedicated, curious, and have a great attitude about working on board. Okay, so the ship might not be your thing. Uh, that's okay, because this could be you too. Uh, we have about 130 employees thriving in our head office in downtown St. Catharines, which is also close to Niagara Falls. Uh, whether into traveling across Canada and the world, numbers, technology, have great people skills, or you're dreaming about being a top dog, like a captain, chief, or vice president, uh, we've got a spot with your name on it. Um, check us out online. Uh, if you're planning on unscrolling on your computer or phone tonight, uh, why not give our social media and website a quick visit? Uh, we've got a bunch of awesome resources and information waiting for you to explore and learn more about Algoma. Uh, don't hesitate to ask your parents for a hand. They might find it interesting too. So thank you for listening. Yes, um, thank you. Are there any questions? Um, so we'll answer the question from the bake while everybody else is asking their questions. Uh, the question was, is it relatively easy for uh, the crew to get assistance uh, when they when something goes uh, wrong, uh, an IT or a mechanical issue? So we are privileged with our vessels operating in the Great Lakes um, as these vessels are calling port very frequently. 
uh, some of our vessels make over a hundred trips a year. Um, so they're, they're often in port. So we have a lot of, we have a big network of, of contractors, um, both externally and uh, skilled people in house uh, that go to these vessels and, and determine what's wrong and then uh, come up with a game plan uh, from there. Um, and we have a purchasing department in house that orders vessels, all of their spare parts or any equipment they need. Um, so they're always, there's always deliveries being made to the vessel for any, any equipment or. Yeah. Uh, and we try to keep communications, uh, constant between shoreside and shipboard. So the people in the office and the people who are on our ships, um, I partake in creating a newsletter every month called, uh, strive together. And it just, you know, uh, provides safety tips. Um, whether that's like regarding the ship or referral like online um, or, you know, any like news that comes out uh, about Algoma, um, they're, they're able to read it out. Um, and then they also get like alert, like safety alerts and um, um, they, they're kept in uh, close contact with like our, our operations department. Great. Well, hey, guys. Um, so, yeah, thanks. Thanks for that presentation. Uh, really interesting stuff. Um, yeah, I loved I loved seeing uh, what life is like board really really cool um so this is the the question period so um i i have a couple questions for you but i also want to uh just remind our audience um please uh type uh your questions into the chat uh, we would love to to hear from you um you can ask uh, anything you'd like from uh, from jacob and raquel and i believe uh you guys have a, a an additional guest for us today to uh participate in the in the q a Yes. So uh, our director of traffic, Chantal Lassard, uh, will be joining us to help us answer some questions. Awesome. Hi, Chantal. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Good morning. Yes, oh, I'm a director from, I'm a manager, one of the manager from the marine traffic, from the vessel traffic and customer service at Algoma. So I've been sailing on ships and I've been working in the marine industry for 35 years. Wow. That's so. Awesome. Hopefully, I'll be able to help you out if you don't know the answers. Perfect. Well, thanks for uh, for joining us. So, um, one one question I, I wondered. You know, we heard a lot from from different uh, crew members in the video. Um, I was wondering for for each of you, I guess. Um, you know, what for you? Uh, you know, what do you like most about about the jobs that uh, that you do? Can I go first? Yeah, I can go first. Um, my job at Algoma involves a lot of uh, uh, on-site review of, of issues that are happening on the vessels. Um, so I like my job because it's a uh, each day is different, um, and anything that I'm being exposed to, any anything that's gone wrong or any new projects, um, it's always changing and it's always different. And I get to be part of the project from oh hey this has gone wrong to going on board, seeing what's happened coming up with a, a repair specification, what we're going to do to fix it, um, and then being a part, part of uh, hiring contractors to come on board and fix that problem or, or adapt something or modify something, um, and then uh, uh, be part of the QC process at the end of the quality assurance. So that's why I like marine industry. Uh, yeah, I have a similar answer. I, I like having something new to do every day. Um, there's such a, we cover such a diverse amount of like, industries and connections across Canada that uh, my projects and, and what I'm able to do um, here in the office uh, changes, um, whether we're working in the political side or the communications like with Canadian Geographic, um, I have an exciting like uh, opportunity to be able to uh, talk to different people, um, talk to people from across Canada and from across the world and, and work with them closely. So that's probably my favorite thing about the marine transportation industry is that it's worldwide and it's all interconnected. What I like the most about uh, my work, actually, I've been in the industry for 35 years, as I mentioned before. And as such, I worked in the office, which I am working now and um, uh, we're in the commercial department where we're making this schedules for all the ships where they're going to load and discharge and bring the cargo so i'm in uh, uh, updating this information for the different ships and then we're informing the ships as to where they uh, they are going and then we talk to the captains and the chief engineer and we're making sure that everything is going well all along um, 
uh, when you're, so this is very interesting on the ship, uh, from the office ways, but uh, when you're um, actually working on the ship, then it's uh, the fact of being outside, you're away from home and you see all kinds of different things, you work with different people, and it's very interesting. Great, actually, just to, uh, to uh, continue on that, on that uh, there's a question about um, you know, what are some of these sort of interesting places you've seen, I guess, uh, in, from vessels or, or, tra or through traveling uh, through work? Or, or wildlife as well? Like, uh, what are some examples of things you see? Well, I've been working on the Great Lakes and also on the East Coast, on the, on the St. Lawrence River, and the East Coast of Canada and the U.S. East Coast. And I went down all the way down to um, the Gulf of Mexico. So you see different wildlife. Um, see whales, see um, um, seagulls <laughs> a lot, <laughs> seagulls, yeah. a lot, uh, uh, dolphins coming on the swim on the bow of the ships and uh, a different port that we're going to. So it's really interesting. Um, okay, uh, another question here. Um, what about weather? Uh, is that does weather uh, pose a, a problem often, or uh, like what? Uh, do you have any stories about uh, you know, experiences with weather? Yes, yes, weather is affecting the ships every day. Um, so sometimes it's slowing down the ships, so we're um, uh, delaying the cargo distributions into the ports, and uh, sometimes we'll get congestions. Uh, into the ports because there's been too many weather and the vessels have to anchored and got delayed. Uh, some other times uh, uh, you're at sea and the weather is very bad, so it's uh, uh, getting uh, sometimes scary. But uh, we're into a good environment and we feel safe. Um, then we have we do have some ships that are able to sail all year long um uh, and they're equipped with icebreakers yeah, uh, yeah tankers. the all of our tanker fleet i do believe all of our tanker fleet is ice classed um so these vessels even if even when the the saint lawrence or the welling canal shuts down for this season um we have vessels operating in the upper lakes uh so lake michigan uh, lake huron and lake superior um and lake erie as well uh, and they always have a uh uh, an escort with an icebreaker so it's quite uh, quite cool to, to see yeah, pretty cool yeah so do we have any more questions from oh <laughs> Well, I'm going to pop on. Um, I, I'm Eric's backup for today's presentation, and he appears to have lost his internet connection. <laughs> Always <Perfect>. interesting <laughs> when we're doing virtual presentations, so I'm going to step in just to uh, wrap up today's Q and A and the presentation. Um, so. Raquel, Jacob, Chantal, thank you so much for a fantastic presentation. And the video was really inspiring and really just showed a nice overview of all of the opportunities that are available and all the responsibilities that there are um, when you work with Algoma. So thank you very much. Thank you to the audience who tuned in for today's presentation and for your questions. And uh, I'll just uh, give a shout out to tomorrow's presentation. Um, please go on to the Marine Month website and look at the schedule. We have uh, some great presentations coming up tomorrow and further throughout the month of October. And a reminder, also on the website, we have learning activities and we have the recordings of previous events available for teachers and students to access. So thank you both and uh, we'll see you again soon. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.